if we don't feel safe and there's chaos going on around us and someone looks like a threat, we're going to go for that as well. And there's this mm. spectacular experiment um, that was done um, quite a few years back. It's one of the most popular um, psychology experiments. It's called the ASH conformity experiment where they put these people, I'm sure you're familiar with it, they put these people um, in a room together um, and asked them to look at a line, two lines, mm. see whether one was longer or one was shorter. Mm. And for 75% of people in the main experiment, even when that person knew with 99.99% clarity because they'd done the experiment before without other people in the room, even though they knew that line was longer, if everyone else in the room was saying that that line was shorter, they would 75% of the time say, oh, yeah, no, no, that's definitely shorter too. Absolutely. Because so that's we- the crowd forcing them to abandon their what they know to be true. Exactly. And that comes from a real primal unconscious need to um, feel safe and supported by the people in the nervous systems around us. And we do that by mimicking and copying and conforming. And a lot of it is comes from an unconscious place. So if we are feeling confused and we are feeling guilty about why did I do that and why did I um, follow that, it's because we're seeking safety. It's because we're seeking community. It's because we're seeking from our nervous system and unconscious mind level congruency because when we're left alone, when we're left outside of the pack, it's dangerous for our nervous and that's what we understand. Can I inject into here a little clip uh, of an episode of Brain Games where they did the Asher experiment, but they also went on to do an experiment where uh, in a doctor's surgery, a beep would go off and to see whether people would stand just because of peer pressure to this beep. We set up a hidden camera experiment to see if this woman would stand up at the sound of this tone simply because everyone else is. You might be thinking you'd never go along with this. Or would you? After just three beeps, and without knowing why she's doing it, this woman is now conforming perfectly to the group. But what happens if we take the group away? Okay, now she's alone, the crowd is gone, and nobody is watching her, except our hidden cameras. What do you think she'll do? She's now conforming to the rules of the group without them even being there. Now, watch what happens when we introduce another outsider who doesn't know the rules. Have a seat and they'll be out in just a couple minutes. Great, thanks. thanks so much. Everybody was doing it, so I thought I was supposed to. Think she'll teach the new guy what to do? We kept the cameras rolling as more unsuspecting patients arrived. And slowly but surely, what began as a random rule for this woman has now become the social norm for everyone in this waiting room. Is that what was happening with Novak the first time around? It wasn't so much that people really hated Novak, really. It was that he represented a threat and our it seemed like our entire community of humans in Australia was saying he's a threat and so to stay on side with them, I guess, to stay with the herd, we wanted to. Yeah, yeah. Look, and with this experiment as well, I think what is so important for us to understand if we don't want to repeat these things is to understand that these experiments, while they're completely fascinating, are completely repeatable. They're repeatable with monkeys um, trying to fight over a banana. Um, Mm. 
and they get electrocuted. You replace all, all the monkeys one by one with new monkeys. The new ones, the old ones, even if they hadn't noticed that um, or hadn't been electrocuted in the past, um, they, for not knowing the reason, they will prevent other monkeys from going for that banana because they know that something's wrong. They know they're scared. So when we are surrendered to our unconscious mind without showing curiosity, we are at the mercy of it. Mm. So now if we consider, let me show you another clip. This is of a man who lives in a suburb in Melbourne called Nanawading, and he's complaining to that great hard-hitting journalist, Ali Langdon, uh, that Novak coming back now in 2023 is terrible. He should suffer the way we suffered. His ban should stand and Albo should kick him out of the country. For all the other means of Australians who actually had to sacrifice and had to do things that they didn't enjoy, but we played by the rules. We did as the government and the authorities asked us to do. And, and for my wife to be in hospital and only be allowed one visitor, not to be able to see any other members of the family or her friends, both here in Melbourne and Adelaide, and yet we have one other person now who thinks that they should be given special treatment. And it really upsets me because we did as we were asked. We suffered and we're still suffering now. So I just want to ask Prime Minister Albanese and the Immigration Minister Andrew Giles to say no, all Australians must be treated fairly and equally. We did our bit and we expect Djokovic to be treated the same way and that is equally and fairly like everyone else and not given special treatment. So how now can the government expect people to do the right thing when they ask us to do things that are not popular, that we don't want to do, and then later on down the track say, well, the pandemic's passed mm -hmm. now, we'll make, we'll make a special exemption for other people just because you're rich and you're famous. So Lauren, there's that gentleman. Uh, and this brings us into how people process things now. He, we make fun of him, but he's clearly going through some kind of cognitive process where he can't process the trauma that was done to him by the government a year ago. Yeah. Yeah. So I just mentioned the monkey experiment where these monkeys don't even know why they're tearing the other monkeys down to stop them from getting the banana. Mm. So that's a perfect, this clip is a perfect reference to that, but not only that, a lot of the work that I do, I, um, I work in the parts work space and the way, the beautiful way to picture what is happening for him is that there are, there's a dichotomy in his unconscious mind. Um, there was a trauma that happened where he was forced to split off from his authentic truth, his authentic desires. So say, for example, he didn't want to be taking an injection. He didn't want to be um, locked out of certain parts of the country or to let, let's say that's where, where that resentment comes from. Mm -hmm. But he, in order to survive, he had to shut that part of himself down. Right. And to do that, he had to use certain tools in his unconscious mind. He had to probably be quite so critical of his authentic self. He probably had to be quite... Um, quite hard on every part of himself that believed that this was unfair, um, that this was not right. And so to do that, he developed a protector part. And you, you can identify this very clearly as a protector part. However, if we're not conscious of this happening, of this protector part coming out and, and it's kind of stepping in um, as, a, as a bodyguard for the parts of us that can no longer come forward, Mm. Um, we allow that protective part not only to punish ourselves every time we think that we deserve better, but to punish other people and to punish mm. the world around us because from a, a twisted perspective, even though this protective part knows it's not right, we're slipping into these unconscious survival mechanisms of fight, flight, fawn or freeze, and that means I'm going to try and placate you for fawn, um, I'm going to try and run away for flight, um, and I'm going to try and fight you if I can't freeze because if you are trying to um, get into the parts of me that I'm trying to protect and I know I can't protect them, this is the best I can do by fighting you, then I, I'm going to use whatever way I can because I'm not in my rational mind, I'm in my survival brain and I am trying to survive. I'm going to attack you instead. Mm. 